pleasure. So great to see you. I, I always get a kick. Like, I'll go back and watch interviews, too, even just to research, you know, like, what we covered and everything. And you just bring this, like, lovely sunshine about you. You have such great energy. Yes. yes. Very and sweet of you. Well, you do, too. You oh, do, too. Okay. Mutual Admiration Society. Oh, <laughs> so kind of you no yeah and um i'm so excited i'll do a, a little intro and then we'll okay. we'll get into it yeah no because i'm so excited about france too so okay <laughs> 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 i'll just say um thank you so much miss diane drake for being here today with us the lovely screenwriter author teacher just fantastic friend to the writer and filmmaker and yes we're just so blessed and lucky to have you as part of the festival again this year and for being with us here today well thank you so much thank you for inviting me it's lovely to see you again thank you same here my pleasure and i'm sure everyone else who was watching this as well yes we all learned so much from you um from your <laughs> last interview your great book um talking about the inciting incident um i it, it made me wonder i wonder like um when people read your book like do they comment to you afterwards like get in touch or if it's one of your mentees and tell you how it's affected them um you know occasionally they do i i will say um which i really appreciate you know it's really nice to hear that it's been helpful to people um that was the intention, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, people do occasionally, and and typically it is usually mentees or students or whatever. But occasionally, I'll just hear from somebody, you know, because they can reach me through my website. So, right, yeah, it's nice. You know, that's so fantastic because I know writing can be such a solo endeavor. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't think like yeah. people. Who, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. Or even, I'm well aware. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, so so all the more reason I will say, uh, even though the teaching um, is not terribly lucrative, relatively speaking, um, it, it is really, really nice to have that interaction. And it's really nice to feel like, you know, in some small way, you've maybe helped somebody um, pursue their dreams, you know, nice. Right. Right. Yeah, no, that's so fantastic. Yeah, because like, I don't think people realize how much like behind a computer or in a notebook you have to be to. <laughs> yeah, no, it's really true. It's a very, you know, listen, I mean, you have to have a tolerance for that if you want to do it at all, but it can be really isolating, you know, and, um, and also just, I mean, I don't know, it, it's a tricky profession that way, because you obviously, if you're screenwriting, right, as opposed to a novelist, you know, you're you're writing, well, maybe novelists are doing this too, but anyway, as a screenwriter, you're definitely writing it for it to make it to the screen, you hope, someday. You're not writing, just put it on a shelf. And sadly, uh, quite often, if that even happens, which is an incredible long shot, um, you're not really part of it, you know, as a feature writer. If you're a TV writer, it's different, but um, feature writers are not, historically anyway typically very welcome on the set which <laughs> just so strange but whatever yeah. yeah yeah no and and it's so funny like I wonder where um you stand with this like I hear so many people say like don't even bother like trying to send a query letter like it's like the equivalent uh, and get in hopes of getting like your feature made like it's the equivalent of going swimming and you know finding a mermaid or something <laughs> <laughs> you know um you know i wonder where you well, it i suppose it depends who you're querying right like if you're querying a small management company um then you know go for it you know if you're gonna query a, a you know an oscar winning director or somebody who's really hot right now chances are they're not going to pay attention to you you know they are only generally speaking they're only open to people who they know and people who are recommended by people they know so um you know i, I wouldn't completely discourage people from doing it but you have to be somewhat realistic about who you're approaching and and at the same time you know <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, you got nothing to lose from a certain <laughs> angle. If you want to spend the time and effort, go nuts. Go nuts. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I think, too, like, sometimes I think, like, writing that query letter and getting it all straight could even impact the script. Like, maybe it'll make you rework the script in a certain way, make it tighter. Um, I think, yeah, I think that's an excellent point. When you, you sort of look at it with fresh eyes, when you're submitting it or, con you know, considering submitting it to somebody new, especially someone you don't know, it's interesting how <laughs> when you try to boil it all down to that one liner, right. like it's astounding how, how, how the flaws will reveal themselves to you. In, in that process, because you think, well, it's only a sentence or two, I mean, how hard can it be? But then you realize, oh, gosh, I'm, I'm not sure I do know what this is about, right? <laughs> or, or can I, you know, convey it in a way that feels compelling and feels, you know, like something that would be engaging, you know, because you can get really lost, I think, sometimes on the details of the screenplay. Yes. Yeah, I think so. And I think that's um, such a, a beautiful gift of what you're giving, not only with your book, but only with also with your retreats. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? You have one coming up. Sure. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I, they're not my retreats. They're, they're organized by a woman named Claire Elizabeth Terry, who runs a fantastic um, series of retreats, actually. Um, they've been mainly in France. Um, for the last few years, but she does have one coming up in April in Italy, which I actually was supposed to be doing, but I'm not doing that one now. Anyway, um, but I am doing two in May at this castle, um, which is called Marawat, which is owned by the music producer Miles Copeland. And um, it's in the southwest, I want to say, of France. It's in the Dordogne, if people know where that is. Anyway, it's just really lovely. And um, I mean, it's just really fun to go to France in the first place. And it's amidst these rolling lavender fields and stuff. And nice. it's just a really well run, um, I think, event. It goes for typically about a week. Uh, the food is amazing. <laughs> and you're in the castle. And, and you're kind of in this bubble, this creative bubble. But getting back to what we were talking about earlier with, you know, the isolation, what's so great about it is you're among fellow writers. And it's a really supportive atmosphere. Um, but I think and also pretty, um, I don't want to say demanding, but it, there's a lot. There's a lot of information that's conveyed. I think the mentors are really top notch. And um Trust me when I tell you that we work pretty much nonstop through the whole thing. You know, we, we give presentations, we give pitches, we give in, we work in individual groups and do individual feedback for each type, group of four mentees usually. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it, it's a lot of interaction, a lot of information, and hopefully a lot of fun for the people who go. And I've just had a great time doing it. So I'm doing two weeks in May and another week in September this year so oh, wow. people can find out about it if they go it's rockaberti r-o-c-a-b-e-r-t-i writers well we'll leave a link also um in the description yeah definitely no that sounds amazing so it gets it sounds really intense and you people like generally bring a script or they start developing an idea they, I, as I recall, it's been a few years now since we've been able to do this. But yes, they submit a script that's a work in progress, usually, or, or you know, something that maybe they feel is pretty much there, but they want to get feedback on. Um, and then I read all of those, all the mentors read the material before we go of your four mentees. Um, so yeah, you kind of have to have a piece of material that you're working on. Um and then we focus on that primarily. But again, there's all kinds of presentations and pitch practice. And um, yeah, it's just, it, it's a lot. Um, but it's just a really, like I said, it's a really supportive environment. It, it, the people I've met there, some of them become very close friends. It's just, and you know, it's like camp for adults kind of. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, creative camp for adults. That sounds fantastic. In France, no less. <laughs> exactly. What more do you want? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, it's yeah. No, that that it just it's 
Yeah, it's so lovely to be in like that you were saying that creative bubble because I really feel like a lot of people like um you know like when you're watching a movie like their minds don't trace back and like imagine that person like sitting there like that came up with this idea could have had held on to it for years until it finally found the right producer, the right agent or Anyway, yeah, so I'm just very, <laughs> I, I you're, think it's you're just... exactly right. I think the average person doesn't think at all about who wrote the movie. Maybe it's a tiny bit more now. Writers have become a, become a little more, I don't know, part of the culture. But for the most part, I think they're, you know, paying attention to the actors. They're paying attention to maybe the director, um, but not so much typically with the person who, particularly if it's an original, came up with it in the first place. Yeah. Um, you know, if it's a novel, usually, not usually, but sometimes if it's a bestseller, people will know who wrote the novel. But I don't yeah. think most people, we probably have talked about this, I don't think most people can tell you who wrote the script. Yeah, 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 and very it, true. Yeah. I wonder, are you um, watching something right now or series or a film that's gotten really close to your you know, heart? I wish I could tell you that I were. I, I'm trying to think. I mean... I, I watched 13 Lives, which was Ron Howard's movie about the kids in, the soccer, in Thailand who got trapped in the cave. Yeah. Um, I thought it was well done. I, I, I have to say, I thought it was quite well done. I, I made me curious about the, I remember the real event, but I didn't know how they got out. I didn't know the details of how they got them out of the cave. I don't know if you've seen it or if you know. I saw a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. I saw a part of it. Yeah. The, um, the beginning. Yeah. was re very impactful. Yeah. I just... I did well, if you if you watch the whole thing, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have to go back and watch that. how they got them out, yeah. and it's pretty astonishing. It's pretty amazing. So I enjoyed that. I mean, it's you know not that amazing, but it's well done. Um, I I'll say two things. Uh, uh, I probably shouldn't say this because you know why be negative, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I okay. I, I, I'll I'll preface something that I really like by something that I admired and I know a lot of people liked, but I did not. And it, this is where it gets very subjective, right? It's okay. like, if I put on my professional writer hat, like I know this was well done. It was well done. It was well directed. It was well shot. It was well cast. It's well acted. It's well written. And I know it's really popular. And the, the show is white Lotus, right? Okay. Yes. yes. Uh, and, and I get it. It's compelling. Um, and I love Italy. And so I was, you know, this season is in Sicily and it's really beautiful. But for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love your honesty. I love your honesty. You know, I mean, <laughs> is just so miserable yeah. and mean, practically everyone. Yeah. And I just don't enjoy that. I don't enjoy spending time with a bunch of characters that are all obnoxious kind of in their own ways and with you know like maybe one exception and Jennifer Coolidge is fantastic don't get me wrong she's hilarious I mean god bless her but yeah. for me I just could I just I'm like but you know obnoxious privileged white people whatever you know yeah. <laughs> it's hugely popular as I'm sure you know and I get why it's hugely popular because again it is very well done but I just ugh. anyway <laughs> I, like I said, I admire it. I don't. I didn't enjoy it particularly. Um, although I, I guess I should watch the last episode because everybody says that's amazing. So whatever. Meanwhile, uh, I just bought a book that uh, was written. This is how old I am. It was written about one of my favorite favorite films ever, and about the making of it. And the movie is called Local Hero, and it's set in Scotland, and it was made in the eighties, and. It's the most perfect movie in my opinion. Wow. It's just absolutely lovely. And it's very quiet. It's very wry and subtle. But I think it's hilarious. I think it's laugh out loud funny. But it's very subtly funny. And it's set in this beautiful little tiny Scottish town. And it's a very beloved film of people who know it, which is why this book was recently written about the making of it. It has a very passionate fan base, I think, even still. And I was just thinking about the fact that, you know, I saw the trailer for, um, well, I, I saw Everything Everywhere All at Once. 
And I saw the trailer for something called RRR. I don't know if you've heard of that. It's a movie that's out of India. It's gotten a lot of acclaim. It's not Bollywood. It's like Southern India. Um, 40 seconds of that trailer, I'm friggin' exhausted. It's just, it's nonstop assault on your senses. Kind of like everything, everywhere, all at once. You know, this frenetic action and noise. <laughs> And, you know, I'm not their demographic. I get that. But I do kind of lament the fact that everything has to be like that now. Right. You know, it's it's the superhero mentality. Bigger is better. More is more. Louder is better. You know, and and it, I, I suppose you can make the case it's very masculine filmmaking from a sort of traditional gender stereotype angle. Um, whereas Local Hero, like watching that now, having not seen it in quite a long time, even though I have seen it many times, it's like this oasis, you know, it's just a, a grace and, and <sighs> civility and humanity. And, and these characters aren't perfect at all. They're quite interestingly drawn, you know, but there's a humanity to them and they're quirky and, and funny and, real in their quirkiness you know what i mean like it, it feels authentic to the time and the place anyway so i would highly recommend <laughs> yeah it no. feels like you know like you go into a theater and you sit through the trailers and it's just a freaking assault i just <laughs> exhausted by them so rare, rare, i'm cranky but <laughs> I, I, oh, yeah. I, I try to find those things that where you know i i always say and listen we all have our own you know, whatever taste and it's all subjective, but I just don't like to come out of a theater feeling worse than when I went in. I just kind of like to come out feeling better. <laughs> it's kind of hard to come by anymore. You know, there's, there's that middle ground. I've talked about this a lot, you know, that middle ground of people like, you know, Sidney Pollack or Jim Brooks or whatever, you know, making those sort of North Efron those sort of middle movies you know they weren't they weren't tent poles they weren't franchises they weren't that but they weren't little dark indies either and now it feels like the business is little dark indies for the most part theatrical or mm -hmm. you know little indie dramas that somehow slip through the cracks to get made but they're dark uh, nine times out of ten yeah. and superheroes that's about it and then yeah. in streaming it's like dysfunction you know it's the yeah. elizabeth Holmes, it's it's the it's the white lotus it's you know all these sort of <laughs> sociopaths <laughs> <laughs> no it, it, you bring up such interesting points and i i don't i don't think i've thought about it like that i i remember somebody saying that in the 90s um is when you had to have a, a likable character to have a movie made that you wanted that character to relate to um but now you don't um mm -hmm. like that's gone but it, the interesting point that you bring up is like, yeah, when has a movie just like uplifted you? Just, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, got the, exactly. I exactly. Got the and it's interesting that you say that you really don't need a, a likable lead anymore. And I think you're probably right. I mean, I still operate. <laughs> <laughs> the principle is like, when I read a script, it's like, why should I care about any of these people? I still sort of feel like I should care, even if they're very flawed. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if they're sort of anti-heroes, like I, I ought to care whether or not they succeed because otherwise what's the point? Why am I watching? Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, anymore, it just feels like, I don't know what it is, this, this wallowing and dysfunction. I think, I don't, you know, it's either that or superheroes. It's like, it's as though people, you know, there's, there's kind of this underlying assumption that like, well, either people want to come out feeling better about their lives. So like by comparison, well, at least it's not that bad, you know, for the, yeah. one. and then the superhero, <laughs> they're looking for a superhero, right? Because everything feels so crazy and out of mm -hmm. control. And so the wish fulfillment is, is for some sort of supernatural, you know, being to come along and set things right, I guess. And yeah. regular ordinary humans, that's not that interesting, you know? Yeah. Wow. This is, <laughs> I could, I could see like people hearing this and going, yeah, I should write positive uplifting scripts about yeah, and good luck a decent them. person. Good luck with that. <laughs> it's made, but they just, I don't know. Like I, I watched a trailer today and I, I shouldn't say this, <laughs> but I'll say it. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. 
I, I don't know. I really don't know. But it, it was it's a trailer for it's called Your Place or Mine. It's a new ro romantic comedy. I think it's being released theatrically, but it may not. It might just be Netflix. Um, but it was a screening at the Writers Guild. And it's Eileen Brosh McKenna, who got the writing credit on Devil Wars Prada, which I think is a, that's, now that's an example of a great movie, I think. But even that's older now. I mean, that movie's probably, what, 15 years old. I think of that as being kind of new, but it's really not. Um, but anyway, uh, at least 10. But anyway, so she's now written and directed this this rom-com with Reese Witherspoon and um, Ashton Kutcher. And I do think she's a good writer. You know, I, I will say I have heard that, you know, even though she got the sole adaptation credit on Devil Wars Prada, there were a number of other writers involved. So make of that what you will. But be that as it may, I watched the trailer <laughs> You know, even as as hungry as I am for that kind of movie, it just looks so predictable and yeah. kind of tired to me. And there, there was nothing that struck me as fresh about it. It looked functional. And maybe, you know, maybe the movie is better than the trailer. But it's disappointing because so few of those ever even get made anymore, you know. And, and there's so few people who get to make them. You know, Cameron Crowe used to be one of those people. And I don't know what he's done since Aloha, which was not a good movie. <laughs> and, and but he's made some of my favorite movies, you know, and and uh, I miss those movies, I guess. Yeah, yeah Singles is a favorite of mine. Anything. Yeah. You know, Jerry Maguire is really watchable. I watched that again recently. I mean, it, it, it's held up. Really good stuff in it, and probably one of Tom Cruise's best performances. Wow. Um, you know, it's um, it's hard to do. It's really hard to do. I will, say. <laughs> <laughs> especially now. You know, when those things are hard to sell, originals that are, you know, kind of again mid budget, um, and and get them released theatrically. I, I I don't think this this Your Place of Mine is going to be released theatrically. I could be wrong, but but at least it got made. You know, good. For yeah. Me. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That brings me to, I want to ask you, what are you writing right now? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It's pretty easy to critique. Um, I, well, I have I, written this I know this. it's going to be awesome, so that's oh, all right. <laughs> well, I've written a script uh, that I finished a while ago now, a few months ago. I don't know, like six months ago, um, which uh, I'm having a very hard time getting any traction on. And um, I think part of the problem is this, this, it's, a, it's a pretty autobiographical script um, and it's kind of critical of Hollywood. So I'm sort of trying to sell a movie that's critical of Hollywood to Hollywood. And that's probably not the best strategy. Um, not that that hasn't been done, but it's generally been done by people who were far more powerful than I am. So I think that's complicated matters. I mean, it has its fans. Unfortunately, they're not people with money. Um, so, but it's not been seen a lot. And I need to do some thinking about what might be the best strategy. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking at this point of just trying to go to directors, you know, not not waste time you know just, just trying to attach a director and um and that's tricky too because again theatrically you know like i would love if it were to be greta gerwig but greta gerwig's like into my movie you know what i mean like i i know that she first of all she writes her own stuff but second of all like she's a very hot you know director at this point so i need to find somebody probably who's coming out of streaming but i'll tell you finding people this gets back to what we were talking about it's a dramedy, what I've written. Um, so it's a little more serious than some of the other stuff I've done, but it's still pretty comedic. And I think certainly it would be great to have a director who had done comedy. Hard to find, especially if you want a woman, you know, which kind of everybody does now. I, I'm not necessarily, I don't know that that's necessarily better, but I think that might make it more saleable. Um, but, you know, it's like I was looking at um, Never Have I Ever you know, some of the directors on that. But, but if a director in TV is not like a director in features, right? It's a different task. It's a different skill set. They're really not the most powerful entity in television the way they are in film in terms of shaping the project, right? It's more the producer and the writers. 
So are they just kind of hired hands? You know, I was, I was looking at, you know, curb. Um, there's an episode or like a few episodes. Oh, this is something I loved. Here's something I loved. <laughs> I'll tell you something I loved recently. Um, so curb your enthusiasm. I'm sure you're familiar. Yeah. Um, I believe this was the most recent season. Uh, there was about three or four episodes and apparently originally it was just supposed to be one. And she was so good that they extended her storyline with a young woman who plays a character named Maria Sophia. And she is um, the daughter of a guy. It's kind of convoluted. She's the daughter of a guy whose brother accidentally drowned in Larry's pool. And so her father kind of extorts Larry because Larry's, you know, creating this new series called Young Larry. And, and her father, she wants to be an actress. So her father extorts Larry, you know, on threat of he's going to sue him over his brother's death, even though it wasn't hers, his brother's fault that he drowned in Larry's pool. It was not Larry's fault. The guy climbed in his pool. Anyway. Uh, into hiring his daughter to be the lead, you know, to, or to be in this series. And the girl who plays the daughter, her name is Kayla Mejia Monteroso, I believe, is so freaking funny. I just think she is genius. I think she's so brilliant. And she's gotten a lot of attention off of it. And I think she's probably working quite a bit. But man, she's good. And especially when you think about that, that show is largely improv. You know, it's like her instincts in those moments. <laughs> she's she's so out there, but she's so funny. Um, I quite loved that. So anyway, if anybody knows of any good women comedy directors, let me know. Party you know, pop. who popped into my mind? Pamela Andelin. Is that a, how do you say her last name? Um, I'll, I'll look into it. She does uh, better things. I think it's oh yes 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 yeah yeah the actress yeah yes yes but I've seen like she's gotten like a lot of she's directing great. on credits on that as well Adlon. yeah, yeah. Adlon. yeah, yeah yes yeah. yes yeah oh, that's a good idea that's a great yeah idea. yeah thank you yeah, yeah. never never I've knew seen her speak actually she's very smart really ah. talented. Wow. No, I, I wish you that's, I would love to see this movie. <laughs> I mean, I no seriously, because I know not only like you're saying like the comedic end, but it also feels very real and genuine. I think that's part of the problem, to be honest, because getting back to what we're saying, it's like, there's, there's nothing. When I think about the movies that I've managed to sell, which thankfully have gotten remade, they had an element of the fantastical about them. You know, there was something larger than life going on. And this doesn't have that. You know, this is just ordinary mortals. Um, and I, I almost feel like it needs, you know, and again, I think if I could attach somebody who stood a chance of getting it made, I would feel, you know, more inclined to delve more deeply into this. But I do feel like it needs kind of to be kicked up another notch in terms of, wish fulfillment maybe and also sort of the comeuppance for the villain because i think people want that <laughs> yeah. you know they just do i i was initially not even going to give the thing a happy ending and because i didn't feel real to me and then i thought well that's why people go to movies because they want to see <laughs> they want to see justice done they want to see you know the good rewarded and the bad punished because we seldom see it in real life or too seldom see it i should say so um yeah and that's, that's, I think, also problematic. You know, when I, again, when I think about it, even though it was quite a long time ago, the stuff I sold, there was just something that was larger than life about it. And this is not like that. And it's also, but it's also not dark. You know what I mean? Like it's, it certainly has dramatic elements, but I purposely, intentionally, felt like I wanted it to be somewhat comedic. I just felt like it couldn't just be like, wham, 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 poor me. You know, it had to be in my mind what I consider entertaining. And that usually means that there's wit. Um, but I think it's, I maybe have done myself a disservice with that. Cause I feel like it, it, it's being taken too lightly in a way. I don't know. It's hard to tell, you know? It, it, yeah, no, I, I understand. I understand your point, but I, I just honestly, I would love to see it. And yeah, I, well, yeah. again, Be any great. other suggestions, feel free to send it my way. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll always think of that now. And if I come across anyway, I'm definitely emailing you and yeah, yeah, no, I think that would be fantastic.
Um, yeah. Um, I was just wondering in like, maybe in closing words, do you have, um, any inspiration to writers to send, I, you know, a, a little boost, pick me up, like maybe something you always think about that oh, brings thanks. you forward. <laughs> All I can say, kind of again, getting back to what I was talking about with Local Hero, even though I don't think anyone could sell Local Hero right now. Yeah. Uh, who knows? I could be wrong. But I just think in terms of inspiration, you really have to sort of make it a very conscious effort to immerse yourself in the stuff you love whatever it is you love watch it watch it again read it you know really analyze how they're doing what they're doing how they're moving the reader's eye mind's eye through the page you know how they're introducing new characters you know how they're if, are they being kind of oblique with the story so it's not just so kind of plotting and obvious how is it structured all that stuff because i think it's the only way to a really learn what you really most want to do but also to stay inspired you know to for me that's the biggest thing and it doesn't even really have to be movies you know uh, you know painting is, can be inspiring or whatever you know other forms of art music can be inspiring whatever it is but particularly of the form that you know you're trying to create i just think you can't do too much of that and it will seep into you. You know what I mean? Like, don't worry, you're not going to copy people, but, but you will start to sort of intuitively get a sense of how they're doing things, you know, and it'll seep into your own work. So um, that to me is the most inspiring thing. When I see something I really love and I, and I am, <laughs> I am a tough room. I'll admit it. There's a pretty narrow niche that I really enjoy, but the things I really enjoy, I really enjoy. Like I could watch a bunch of times. I could watch that girl on Curb 15 times and it would still make me laugh. And I could watch a local hero a bunch of times. So whatever it is that inspires you, I think just bask in that. Yeah, yeah. Follow that thread of inspiration and it'll... Yeah, just... and I, I actually had a friend who used to teach, I knew her from teaching at UCLA, and she would say, you know, to really take note of the stories that you're drawn to and stand back and see, like, there's probably some sort of commonality, right? Yeah. And, it, and it's speaking to you about your own life and that sort of thing. You know, there's a thread woven through them. And I don't think that's always the case, but I think generally speaking, it, it's probably true. Yeah. Yeah. And no, I always think back to this um, Will and Grace episode um of all things um where i don't know he was having like a really bad day and everything was he was fighting with everybody will was fighting with everybody or something and then at the end of the episode he's just like um curled up in a corner and he's like i'm sorry and somebody was like who are you talking to and he's like myself mm -hmm. um so yeah I, I just always like when i think of writing something i'm like you know it's really that mirror within us, you know, kind of like, yeah. Yeah. yeah because I mean, what else do you have to draw from? Right. Yeah. Like yeah. You, ultimately you are pulling, you know, especially if you're writing originals, you know, you're, you're from a certain angle, you're pulling it out of thin air, but you're pulling it out of your own heart and mind and life experience. And then it gets sort of transformed and stuff. But one other thing I will say that I was thinking about, uh, quickly, <laughs> one yeah, yeah. On local hero. <laughs> I'm like a broken. <laughs> anyway, um, was somebody because uh, I, I was I was googling like you know comments about it and about the book and stuff, which was just published, and somebody weighed in. That I thought was such an astute comment where they said they could see like a, a certain commonality between local hero and that old television, very old now, but television series Northern Exposure, oh, which I also really really loved. And, and I thought that's a really good point. You know, it's this remote community and somebody from the outside comes in and they're sort of more high powered and there's those commonalities, but there's also the other thing that's going on in a very, very subtle way. Um, and maybe slightly more in local hero than in Northern exposure, but definitely in both, I think, but very subtle is there's magic. There's an element of magic in the air. There's something that's a little bit bigger and a little bit mysterious and a little bit otherworldly mm -hmm. and i think that's really fun for me 
And I think, you know, like when I think about what I might want to write next, I'm thinking about that. Wow. Beautifully said. Yeah, I think that's a lot for people to think about. Like I said, I can see people at home, like just hearing your words and going, okay, I, I think I'm a little bit more on a steady ground um, to approach a new project. And yeah. I, I, I certainly hope so. That yeah. Yeah. Well, it's so fun to chat with you, as always. Same here. Same here. Yes, yes. I'm so grateful that you're involved in our in our festival and that you take time to speak to not only us, but new writers and your retreats you, are fantastic. Um, it sounds amazing. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I can't think of a better way to spend a week or two in, in Paris, <laughs> right, in France. <laughs> I'm so glad they got canceled the last three years. We didn't even do them last year. So really looking forward to that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much again, Diane. You're just fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. So Let's nice see. to see you. Same here. Same. Thank you.